in the last three weeks teaching our uh, youngest children, toddlers and three and four year olds, about three or four times I've been compelled to say to them, drawn to say to them, the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you. He made you. He created you to be a body that he can live his life in. And once you receive him into your heart, he will never leave you. I've had that experience, by the way. I've heard the voice of the Lord, not in my ears, but in my mind, say very clearly that very thing. And I'll tell that little story in a moment. But Hebrews 13, 5. Be content with the things you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Wow, what a reason to be content. <laughs> you got Jesus. What more do you need? I mean, it's like it's like God said through Paul in Romans 8. God, who gave up his son for us, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? <coughs> if we've got Jesus the maker of it all, the one who made it all by the word of his power, holds it all, sustains it all by the word of his power. Why do we have to not be, con why do we have to be discontent since he has promised I will never leave you nor forsake you? And along with that, I I've said to these children in the last three weeks, what David wrote in Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forever, no, evermore. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. So the Lord is at our right hand. I say to these little kids, hold up your right hand. And they're just learning the difference in right and left in many cases. Hold up your right hand. Look at it. That's how close Jesus is. He is the Lord at your right hand. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, I got saved when I was three years old. We lived in Wichita, Kansas. And my mom was teaching me a Bible story one morning in the living room. And I interrupted her. She's probably teaching me David and Goliath. That was my favorite story she told me. And she said she had to teach it to me three or four times a day to make me happy. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I guess because she named me Michael David. I'm not sure. But um, she was teaching me a Bible story. And I stopped her. I said, Mama, I want to ask Jesus to come in my heart. She said, okay, you can. And I don't know why I did this, but I remember it like it was yesterday. It's the first memory that I have in my life, I got up and went out on the front porch, this little house in Wichita, Kansas, a little parsonage at this Free Will Baptist Church where my dad pastored. And I got down on the porch, on the steps, with the sun beating down on my back, and I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And a few years ago, about 2015, maybe 16 or 17, but a few years ago, I got a craving to go find that porch. I had pictures of it from photo albums mom collected. But I wanted to go find that house and find that porch. I mean, it was, it was fun because it wasn't plain and easy to find. The, um, I, I didn't know what street it was on. I knew where the church was. I assumed the parsonage was near the church. And um, I just found the church and started driving around block after block after block till I found houses that look like those old pictures mom had from the front. And then, kind of like a, de a detective looking for clues, trying to solve a case, I finally noticed that the numbers of this old house were on the front porch post. And I got the number. And I started looking at all these houses that look familiar, till I found that number. And the number was actually painted over, but I found it. <laughs> and so <coughs> what did I do? I went up and I took pictures of that porch. And then I took a picture of me standing in front of that porch. And I have those in a frame next to the pictures of me as a three-year-old standing on that porch playing with my tractor and just standing there. 
That's the place where I met Jesus. And within the last two or three years, I was looking at those pictures in my office, thanking Jesus for coming into my heart when I asked him as a three-year-old. And he said to me very clearly in my mind, and I've been there ever since. Wow. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Have I always obeyed him? Not on your life. Not on your life. My teenage years were not very pleasing to him. And I, I'm ashamed of some of the things I did in my teenage years that were not as a believer in Jesus. Did he leave me? No. He was there waiting, seeing the future, waiting on this child dedicated to him as an infant, came to know him as a three-year-old, wrestled with the will of God all my life until I was 19. He had waited on me to come to cast my burden upon the Lord, get in the yoke with him. <laughs> I've been there all the time, he said. Wow. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've gone through, no matter how much you feel like you have displeased him, if you've already received him as your Savior and become his child, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you've not come to Jesus by faith, he's waiting with open arms for you to come to him and receive his sacrifice here at this Easter and resurrection Passover season. Receive the sacrifice he made for you as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But if you have come to him, that's really who I'm talking to now. No matter where you are in your life, he's there. He's always been there. <laughs> I'm just reminded of the third day song. You've always been there. Oh, Mac Powell with that distinct, unique voice that he sings with. You've always been there. He's there. He's been there ever since you invited him in acknowledged his presence and received it. Let him be your guide and your caretaker. Wake up in the morning and give yourself to him anew and pursue his heart and let him live his life through you and you will be amazed both now and in eternity at all he does through you. The Lord at your right hand. Shalom to you.